What even is Mexico's best 11? We are going to at least try and answer that question in today's video. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to be reacting to a post from Football Asada. They reached out to me and a couple other Mexico fans to put together our best Mexico 11s, the one that would go the furthest at the Copa America. I think there was five or six creators in total, including myself. So I'm going to react to everybody's best 11. You guys in the comments, let me know who has the best lineup. And if they're all terrible, drop yours in the comments. But before we get into this, guys, if you like videos about the Mexican national team in English, and if you look forward to seeing Copa America coverage here on Devball TV, make sure you hit subscribe. The first Mexico 11 we're reacting to is from Fútbol Asada, and looks like they've gone with Quiñones and Jimenez as a two-man team up top. I'm not technically sure if they're going for the 4-2-2-2 here, but I think it looks pretty good at a glance. We got a back line here of Arteaga, Vasquez, Montes, Araujo, and Memo Ochoa, and go. I feel like that's going to be the general consensus. Although, the only thing I want to say about this is that the people who are acting like there's a massive gulf between Arteaga and Gallardo, I think you're wrong. Now, trust me, I want Arteaga to absolutely lock down that starting left back position. But from what I've seen at Rayado so far and the limited opportunities he's gotten in the Mexican national team, I do think he's a bit of a overrated figure and I think a lot of that overrating comes from the fact that people just absolutely hate Jesus Gallardo so they are praying to God on a daily basis that his backup his competition are actually better and I do think Arteaga is probably slightly better than Gallardo I'm not going to argue against that but now it's his time now he's back in Liga Mekis he should get a run of games with the national team should he needs to take advantage of this because me I'm not convinced Chavez and Alvarez is the two center mids here absolutely love it he's gone Chucky out left Huerta right Quinones and Jimenez up top okay I love the Quinones Jimenez up top. I don't know if I totally love Chucky left, Huerta right, but I do like the f attacking four, if you want to say it like that. I'm going to ask you guys to do this for every single creator. Drop a grade, a letter grade for Fútbol Asada's best 11 in the comments. I don't really know if there's much I would change overall. I think this lineup does a good job of putting Mexico's best players on the pitch at the same time, at least the most dynamic players. Next up, we have Lads Footy Show's best 11. They've gone with a 4 2 3 1 back line of Chiquete Orozco, Johan Vasquez Montes, and Julian Araujo. Okay, so they've gone with the. They've gone with the hipster pick here. I'm pretty sure there's somebody on Lads Footy Show who's a massive Chivas fan, so. I'm not surprised. And oh, Jesus, they got Malagón too. I, I didn't even notice that. And I'm going to be real, y'all. I was really deliberating between Malagón and Ochoa. I mean, I was. I was up until four in the morning, staring at the moon, the Houston moon, asking for God to show me a sign of which keeper I should choose. And eventually I just went with Memo because I'm just too biased in support of that man. But Malagon, I respect the shout. Now, most people will troll Lads Footy Show for having Chiquete in here, especially the left back. I know he has played it a few times, but he's definitely more of a CB. I would love to hear the explanation for Chiquete at the left back because I can understand Arteaga, of course, everybody loves him. I can understand Gallardo because he'd been there, done that. And I could even understand Omar Campos if you're like, nah, screw Arteaga, screw Gallardo. We need, we need the new guy, you know, the dude who's, who's been balling for so long in the shadows and finally deserves his chance, the young guy. But Chiquete, that's a, bit, that's a bit strange to me. I don't know enough about his game. I don't watch enough Chivas. I've probably seen him play like six times in my life. I would be concerned about the athleticism a little bit against pacier wingers. Like, I saw that and I flashed back to when the U.S. beat us 3 nothing and Victor Guzman just got abused by Tim Weah and literally just got like burnt for pace. I, I don't really know off the top of my head. You guys let me know in the comments who's faster, Guzman or Chiquete. But either way, it's a gamble that... I don't agree with. Now, if you wanted to propose a back three with three CBs and Chiquete as a left-sided center back, I think I could be okay with that depending on how the rest of the lineup would look, but I just think it's a little much. If you were putting together a Mexico 11 and you want to go for that hipster fullback shout, I would have commended and maybe even supported Omar Campos, like I said, but Chiquete, it's just too puzzling for me. They've gone with Chavez, Edson, and Cordova as the midfield three. I like it. I like it. The Cordova, like, he's just an awkward player for me to assess because I'm not sure if he's quite good enough to be a cam, an effective cam at a Copa America or at a World Cup or when the level is very high. I don't know if he's that guy from Mexico. When I think about Cordova, I think of a guy that I would absolutely have in the squad. In probably most games, I'd be bringing him on in the 60th minute. Like, I think it's a crime how little we've seen this guy play for Mexico. And, you know, really is upsetting to me personally because I'm tired of seeing 
Luis Romo and Charlie Rodriguez playing for Mexico. So would I rather have Cordova over those two gentlemen? Absolutely. And I don't even hate the shout either. Like, I don't watch a ton of Tigres either. Well, from what I've seen, I'm encouraged. Again, I'm just worried what this man's actual level is. Piojo at right wing. No. I'm sorry. I'm going to be honest. I think that's the inclusion I disagree with the most out of anything I've seen so far. And this is another thing that I would love to ask these guys about because I don't even think there's an argument that Piojo is better than Antuna. And I don't know if anybody has Antuna in their 11, but again, that one, at least I can understand. You know, Antuna, for as much as we meme him, he is sometimes, when we play bad teams outside of the Germany game, mildly effective. Piojo, I just haven't seen it, bro. Like, honestly, I haven't seen a damn thing. So that inclusion, I'm going to have to give the thumbs down for that. That's a thumbs down from Jack. Chino out left. I like it. I mean, this would be a pretty direct winger combo. Although, again, if you just want somebody who's going to take on your man time and time again, I'd probably put Antuna outright, or maybe even Diego Lainez. Like, I just don't like the Piojo shout. I swear to God, if I see somebody put, like, Stefan Carrillo or something over Santi, I'm, I'm going to delete Deadball TV. <laughs> Okay, and speaking of dead ball TV, here is mine. So I went with the 4-2-3-1 formation. Uh, I went with Arteaga, Vasquez, Montes, Araujo as the back line, and Memo Ochoa at the goalkeeper. Edson and Chavez as the double pivot. I just do not think there's any other correct option. Like, there is no argument to have an Eric Sanchez or to have a Luis Romo because I don't really think there's anything those two gentlemen can do that Luis Chavez can't do. Like, maybe Eric Sanchez has, oh God, maybe slightly better vision, and I don't even think I believe that. But even if he did have that, I just think Luis Chavez is a much stronger overall game. Those two gentlemen need to start every single game for Mexico for the next, like, I don't know, a long time. If we're just talking Copa America, that is the double pivot, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody else. I'm not entertaining another combination. We can talk about Fidel Ambriz. We can talk about some of the other young guys eventually coming in. I'm okay with that, but they're not going to get reps for the Copa. And so for the sake of this argument, I think it's done and dusted. And for the attacking three, or I guess I can just say the attacking four, I went with Chino, Santi, Cortizo, and Chucky Lozano. And the reason I went with Chino Huerta is because I really like basically in every game I've seen for him so far from Mexico and with Pumas as well, that he's a very direct player. And I think that he puts the back line of the opposition on their heels every single time. And especially if we're going to roll out a more pragmatic lineup where we do have a Luis Roma, we do have an Eric Sanchez in the starting 11, we need extremely dangerous wingers. Even though Chino, I'm not going to lie, like he is a wasteful player. I don't think he's quite, how should I say? Like, I don't think his mentalidad, I don't think his mind is like caught up to his skill yet. I think there's still probably a season or so left where he truly peaks as a player. I don't think we've seen the best of him yet, but I'm encouraged. And I think he, he's a guy that absolutely needs to be getting reps with the national team. And then Chucky, we can talk about the fact that, yeah, he didn't work out in the end at Napoli and now he's back in PSV and having moderate success, you could say. I don't even really want to debate that, but I mean, he's the face of the national team. It's it's him and Edson, and, and he needs to be there. And next we have Jordi Cortizo, and I feel like I'll probably be the only person who has Cortizo, and it is a, a hipster shout. I will fully acknowledge that, but I love the fact that despite this man looking like a giraffe whenever he tries to dribble the ball, I love how much of a risk taker he is. I don't want my 10 to be pragmatic, and I feel like a lot of time with Mexico, especially the Gold Cup and stuff, there's just, there's no ability or no willingness to try that risky ball or to try to take on your man outside of the box. And if you beat him, then, you know, Santi's there for a tap in. We don't really have a player like that that I've seen time and time again. Like maybe Diego Line is like kind of reminds me of that, but I, I wouldn't start Line as at the cam. I'd prefer him to be out wide for Mexico. I just like the archetype. It's a big, big gamble to give Jordi Cortizo the starting 10, basically, for Mexico at the Copa. I realize that. I just think he is a difference maker. Like, I see him as a very high risk, high reward player. And I'm, I know he's coming back from injury. I don't really know how extensive that was, but I like what I've seen from him so far. I don't think he's the Mexican Martin Odegaard, but I do think his ability to create chances, especially when we're playing teams that are going to have a low block, Venezuela, I don't think Jamaica are going to have too much of low block, but they'll probably sit back a little bit. Ecuador, we need a player like him who can find the space in behind. And then I don't really need to talk about Santi. I feel like that's a given. Memo Ochoa, I already spoke on. The center backs from Mexico, I mean, despite the form for Almeria, I mean, it is Vasquez and Montes. I think Vasquez has played every single game or every single minute for Genoa this season. There was just nobody touching these boys. I will say I was very close, and in one of my formations, I did have Kevin Alvarez 
as the starting right wing back. I think I was going with like a 3-5-2 or something in that one. In a back four, a traditional back four, especially with Arteaga, I would not start Kevin Alvarez because I think you have two offensively inclined fullbacks who are both not that great at defending. That would kind of scare me. I feel like we would be leaving Vasquez and Montes on an island. I like Araujo's recovery speed. I like his willingness to defend. So that's why I went with him ultimately. But I do think there is space and a formation for Kevin Alvarez in this national team. But if you guys think I'm tripping, you can drive me in the comments. I welcome it. Next, we got the give and go, and it looks like they've gone with a 4-3-3. Gallardo, Vasquez, Montes, Araujo, and Malagón. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. Like, if y'all think I'm about to drag the give and go because they had Jesus Gallardo left back, you tripping. You on the wrong channel. You got to go somewhere else. You got to go talk to Hat Trick Chris because I know Chris hates Gallardo. Like, the man could score a hat trick in the Copa America semifinals against Argentina and lead us to the final, and he would still be talking about how we almost lost to Panama in the Gold Cup final. <laughs> it comes, I swear to God. Sometimes we got hate in our heart for specific players. I don't like Gallardo. But I think it is very, very close. I remember saying after the Gold Cup, there was an argument. He was one of Mexico's best players. Probably not number one, but probably in that three to four spot. So I really respect the shout there. Again, Malagón, is it the correct? Nay. Is it the more intelligent decision to go with Malagón? especially give him some big tournament experience at the next Copa, there's a strong argument for yes. Chavez, Alvarez, Marcel Ruiz. Okay. Okay, we're getting spicy now. Marcel Ruiz, that is a shout and a half. Is it worse than Piojo? Absolutely not. That is the worst selection that I have seen so far. <laughs> With all due respect, Piojo cannot start from Mexico. That is just, it's, just, it's a non-starter for me. If you were interviewing for the Mexican national team job and you walked in and you rolled out the scroll and I saw Piojo in the starting 11, I would have to ask you to leave. The thing that I like about Marcel Ruiz is I feel like Again, we, I talked about the Jordi Cortizo archetype and how that would fit in front of Chavez and Edson. I kind of also like Ruiz next to Luis Chavez in the midfield. I feel like it would be probably like a more athletic, probably more balanced midfield than if we went with Eric Sanchez, Chavez, and Edson. Yeah, honestly, man, I can't lie. I do like the Ruiz shout. I, I kind of, th I'm thinking about it more. Like this is, this is not a scripted video. This is completely off the dome. He's a good passer. He can dribble the ball. He's probably a better progressor of the ball than Eric Sanchez. I think him next to Chavez. Chavez would kind of be like the deep line playmaker. Marcelo Ruiz a little bit more advanced. I mean, could it cook? Could this midfield cook? I kind of think so. You guys let me know in the comments, but I like, I'm a little biased. I do like the give and goes midfield and probably my midfield the best. I think those like kind of the combination of those three gentlemen, even though two of them are the same, I think that's what Mexico needs going forward, especially against better opposition. Like I said, if you want to use... I don't know, Cordova or Lainez or, dare I say, Marcelo Flores. If you want to go with him against, like, Guatemala or Nicaragua, you can, bro, you can do whatever you want. I mean, that's fine, but we're talking about the Copa America. We're talking about the big leagues here. I think, I think we need a little bit more. We've passed the time of Luis Roma. We've passed the time of Charlie Rodriguez, even Eric Sanchez. Cabezazo against Germany aside, I feel like we can do better. And I would love to see a guy like Marcel Ruiz get the opportunity. And then a front three of Quinones, Jimenez, Lozano. Oh, okay. I like it. I, I know Quinones is, is kind of like more of a central guy now, but he can obviously play left wing. I like Chino. I like Chino at the left wing over Quinones, but I think overall it's pretty good. I really, really respect the Gallardo shout. I really do like the idea of Marcel Ruiz. Again, how does this man not have more game time for Mexico? It's an embarrassment. And Malagón, like I said, if anybody's going Malagón over Ochoa, and you're not getting any hate from me. Will you get hate from people in the comments? Probably, but not from me. And the last list we have here is from Diego FIFA, who's gone with the, yeah, it looks like a 4-2-3-1 as well. Gallardo, Vasquez, Montes, Araujo, Ochoa in the back. Edson Chavez, I think that was a clean sweep for the center backs and for Edson and Luis Chavez. Uh, Cordova as the attacking midfielder. Lozano right. Chino left. Santi up top. I like it, man. I mean, it's... I mean, what are we, two players difference? He and I? Yeah, I have Arteaga by a, by a toenail, bro. By a toenail over a Gallardo. And I have Cortizo over Cordova. And I feel like it's just kind of what style of attacking midfield attacking midfielder do you prefer i kind of prefer the cortizo i kind of want to see that for mexico i think it suits us a little bit more but i am mad about cordova i just have more question marks about him than i do with jordy that's it i think this one is pretty solid too i mean i've kind of 
already touched on many of like the debate points with like different players or different formations. It is interesting. Nobody went with a back five, I don't think. Nope, nobody went with a back five. Nobody went with a back three either. Probably because we're having nightmares of Diego Coca and the US beatdown that we suffered. Um, was it back three or back five that game? I think it was a back three. Yeah, so anyways, I think we're all in like a general agreement. And uh, I see a comment here from Last Footy Show. No Luis Romo, no Charlie Rodriguez lovely like not a single one of us y'all this is this is what frustrates me about football it's not just it's not it's not just a Jimmy Lozano problem it's not a Tata problem it's the fact that managers are making millions of dollars to make decisions that are basically just hey you don't have time to implement like a and pasta type play style a Pep Guardiola type play style so basically what you need to do is you need to have a simple game plan and you need to put the appropriate pieces on the board. That's really the main thing that you need to do as a national team manager and manage the squad, you know, keep morale up and things like that. And so when you have fans like us, and I assume everybody here is a YouTuber, who seem to have a deeper understanding of how to set up a team to win, I find that quite embarrassing. And please do not misunderstand me. This is not a Mexico problem. I think the US fans can do the same thing. They can pretty much almost always put out a better 11 than what Greg Berhalter does at. Y'all know I love Asian football. Japanese fans, we do the same thing. We look at what Moriyasu put out and we're like, how did you, how are you getting paid? And this is the, these are the players you decided to go with. And the fact that we have guys who have been religiously included, Luis Romo, Charlie Rodriguez, no Eric Sanchez, not a single Eric Sanchez in here, not a single Antuna, which I think is harsh. The fact that Piojo's in here and Antuna, that is harsh. I will concede. No Jorge Sanchez. That's five players that have basically had a spot. They, they, they've had a, their name on the seat in first class on the airplane. You know when you guys are getting out of the terminal and you see the driver with your name here? They've liter it says Jorge Sanchez. That has literally been the case for years now. How is that possible? How is it possible that us, as I'm not going to call us casuals, but again, as fans, how do we... No more. Because I'm telling y'all right now, even though I think Last Footy Show is probably the one I disagree with the most, if Jimmy Lozano rolled out this lineup, I would respect it. Because I'd be looking at guys at Chiquete, I'd be looking at guys like Cordova, I'd be looking at Malagón, I'd be looking at Chino Huerta, and I'd say, yes, that sounds about right. Do I agree with Piojo? No. And I'd probably be like, damn, Jimmy, why'd you have to do me like that? But literally, if the point is, the, the one I disagree with the most pretty much has like 10 out of 11 inclusions that I think are acceptable. Acceptable to good. Meanwhile, in every single Mexico game, whether it's a friendly, whether it's a Nations League, World Cup qualifier, I'm looking at it and I'm like, how are these bums still in the team? How am I still seeing Jorge Sanchez? Why am I still seeing shouts for Jesus Angulo? Why am I seeing, I literally forgot these guys, Eric Gutierrez, why am I still seeing clamors? and starts and minutes Nestor Araujo I mean god damn it this is why this stuff is so frustrating it's so hard being a Mexico fan I just went on a complete rant there didn't I I apologize uh, I think I'm gonna end the video there guys I don't really have anything else to say you guys in the comments let me know down below which creator had the best Mexico 11 and no you do not have to say it was me you can say I had the worst one honestly no hard feelings if anything i need the humbling if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you leave a like and again last reminder hit subscribe so you don't miss future videos about the mexican national team in english we are going to be doing watch alongs for the nations league game against panama i have a prediction video dropping soon not just for that but for the entire nations league overall including the qualifying games between canada trinidad and tobago costa rica and honduras and uh, check out the social media links down below in the description man Check us out on Twitter. Check us out on Instagram. We're posting clips on there. We post a live stream schedule on Twitter. Y'all are awesome. I appreciate y'all for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one.